game. What stood out the most the, the second time around? Uh, everything I said after the game. Same stuff. Um, <laughs> no, obviously, uh, you know, they came out a supercharge and had us on our heels. And um, in the paint in transition, you know, th those are two big concerns going into this series. And obviously, uh, what changed for us was, uh, you know, getting back in transition, taking care of the paint. Uh, they missed a lot of really good, I mean, our three-point defense was solid, but they also missed a ton of open looks. And um, about six to go in that third quarter, you know, we're down two and uh, we were able to, Going that 20 to four run, but as I mentioned after the game, I, I thought the 14 to two run late in that second quarter was really important in terms of getting back into the game and giving us uh, a little momentum going into that second half. But uh, I think our guys just turned up their uh, urgency and uh, attention to detail and the, the things that we talked all week long in preparation for uh, for game one. Michael Payton kind of just jumped into deep end in terms of playing meaningful minutes in playoff basketball. He gets the catch and shoot three in his first possession, first defensive possession. I think LeBron beats some baseline on the cut for a layup. Next defensive possession, he goes under on DHO and LeBron hits a three. How would you say he settled in from there after the hectic kind of first few possessions in playoff basketball he faced? Yeah, I mean, it's his, uh, his first real playoff minutes, you know, and. Um, I think he was really excited to be out there, and overall, I thought he did a really good job for us. You know, considering, you know, his first time playing meaningful minutes in a in a hell of an atmosphere, and uh, obviously, obviously, you have to control your emotions and calm yourself down a little bit. But I thought Peyton Watson was, uh, you know, he got in foul trouble early. Aaron got in the foul trouble early, but overall, I thought Peyton did a good job. And you know, the back cut that you mentioned, obviously, we talked about in the timeout. We watched it at halftime. Um, but, you know, LeBron's going to make plays. And uh, you know, him going under in the dribble handoff, um, LeBron going three or three from three in the first half, you're saying, uh-oh, you know, he's about to have one of those nights. And luckily in that second half, he, call, he cooled off from the perimeter. Michael, we asked plenty about sort of the, the Jokic to Gordon Law about it dunker. But does a play like that work as well as it does without Nikola being able to sort of make the pass out of his – floater shooting form basically and making that defender sort of decide in the moment whether they need to step up and try and contest a shot because it looks like a floater or no I, I think what the the point you're missing is that he makes that shot yeah I mean there's a lot of guys that could fake it but they're not going to go for it because they can't make that shot uh, Nicole Jokic is one of the best mid-range floater shooters in the NBA so you have to honor it you know other guys may do that but you don't have to maybe honor that area of the floor because Analytically speaking, those are bad shots, but not for a guy like Nikola Jokic. So I think, and then the fact that he can disguise it, you know, a shot or a pass. Um, but I think what also goes into it is that you have Aaron Gordon working behind the defense and two great shooters in the corners. And it puts a lot of pressure on that back line of defense. Second most three point attempts for this season uh, last night. Is that something that you pay attention to? Like, you'll come in and you'll talk about, like, well, they have rebounded us in these, like, key metrics. Do you look at three-point volume as something you're like, that's a little higher, that's a little lower, or are you just entirely, like, that's the flow of the offense and that's what we got out of it? How do you kind of judge that? Yeah, I, I never really get too caught up in the volume. Um, obviously, very concerned about the efficiency, and I think that was a big thing last night. First half, we were six for whatever. Second half, we go nine of 19. You know, Pope knocks down four second half threes. Jamal knocks down two. Michael knocks down two. And Nicola had a big one. So um, they were double teaming Nicola in the post right away, coming off the feeder. So one way to generate open looks, especially from three, is to create a double team. So that was their game plan going in. We're going to take Nicola's post up out of the equation. Well, then you have to be able to move the ball, screen the rotation, and generate good looks. Um, as well as just when we get out and run, making sure we're spacing the floor properly. So not so much for me, Matt, the how many threes are we taking, but are we generating good threes, open threes, uncontested threes? And I thought for the most part last night we did a pretty good job of that. When you look at um, whether you're making shots or missing shots, when you guys don't turn the ball over, you know, the fact, the, the, the fact is that you get shots, whether they make or miss. What is the advantage of that? Being able to just get shots on every single possession, especially being the fact that you guys are such a good uh, rebounding team on the offensive end? Well, I thought the, the most important part of that last night was um, because number one concern going into the series, as I keep on talking about, is transition. 
And if you don't turn the ball over, and you don't have live ball turnovers, you're keeping them. <coughs> now they're running after makes. They may try to run after a missed shot, but it's the live ball turnovers that are killers. And LeBron obviously being one of the best in NBA history, he's a one man break by himself. So second half, I think we had one turnover and it was you know the very last play of the game when we didn't take a shot. So that allows us to, yes, you're getting a chance to get an offensive rebound, which we did a great job of last night. Uh, but more importantly for me, I think it's not allowing the Lakers to get out and run and score easy ones in transition. Uh, because we saw it, I think they had 12 fast break points in the first half. Ten of those were in the first quarter. Now, they, they did come out very aggressive, and I'm sure it's going to be even uh, even more of that tomorrow night. We've Coach. spoken a lot about Nikola's conditioning advantage. How much of that is he's in great shape, maybe even better shape than most players, and how much of that is he's able to overcome fatigue mentally, just push through it and, and play hard in those moments? Oh, definitely a combination. You know, well, we, we were in the locker room after the game last night talking, and uh, I was reminiscing about that game uh, in Portland years ago. And I was telling the story to Aaron Gordon as Nicole is sitting there. And I said, yeah, I, I played Nicola 60 minutes one game. And as I was telling the story, he said, F you, coach. <laughs> um, and I think people, you know, all the time, people just base athleticism on how high can you jump which is part of being an athlete, but there are other great athletes that may not be able to jump very high, but have stamina, have endurance, and Nicole is one of those guys that I think can run forever. And you've heard guys talk about this year, guys that have to play against him, like this guy never stops running and he never gets tired. And there's definitely a component of mentally tough. You know, I mean, you know, the guys that can run long distances, yes, you're physically fit to do so, but a lot of guys physically can do it but mentally, they can't sustain that. And I, I think that's one of the things uh, that's remarkable about Nicola is his ability to be in great shape and mentally just fight through any walls and barriers and just run right through it. Coach, I saw something that said you guys are the first team to beat a team nine straight times and have less free throws than them. And the disparity is like something like 70 over those nine games. What can you do to, I guess, make it a little more even at the free throw line in terms of ten? Why should we? We keep winning. You just, you just answered your own question. I didn't know that stat, but I'm just basing it on what you're saying. Uh, but, yeah, I think in the second half we had uh, a total of zero free throw attempts, um, you know, which is obviously concerning when you consider all the you – know, we had 30 in the paint we scored, and we had plenty of field goal attempts in the paint. So it's not like we're just settling for jump shots. Uh, we are attacking. We are posting. We are playing to the rim. And you would think that that would – warrant a few free throws, at least two. We'll take two. Uh, but that wasn't the case last night. So we just got to stay the course and uh, continue to um, play the game and attack and, and, and play our style. And you hope that, that uh, there's a payoff at some point. But we went into this series knowing that they had a plus 500 differential this year. And uh, so that's something that has been, um, been happening all season long. Coach, your team plays methodically slow-paced, but how do you recognize the moment when you want to push the tempo and try to run out the, the other team? Out yeah, I mean, it's um, you know, last year we were a top three or four running team in the NBA. Uh, the first 50 or so games this year, that was not the case. But coming out of the All-Star break, uh, we were elite. You know, we were top four once again in fast break points per game. And in this building, in the altitude, we, we have to be a team that gets out and runs, especially in the postseason. Um, when the game tends to slow down. Uh, but for us, I think we had 21 fast break points last night. So it's not running after makes. It's not leaking out. It's for us always defending, rebounding, and then running. And to be a good running team, you need all five on the glass, and then you need all five getting out and running their lanes and getting to the right spots. And um, that, that's the advantage that we have here in the Mile High City, and uh, we've got to continue to use it to our advantage. Thank you, Coach. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.